Hello everyone. Welcome from Lima, Peru. I'm slightly under the weather. I'm a bit sick. I'm staying in this beautiful um, Airbnb with a host. And look, there's, they've got three dogs. But well, hopefully the dogs are willing to. Woo! I don't know if you like dogs, but I normally don't like dogs. But these dogs are quite nice. I normally like cats. This is one dog. I don't know the name of this dog. But this dog seems to have a foot fetish. Like to smell your shoes and your feet and lick your toes. <laughs> this is one dog. But we let the dog go. There's another dog that's just laying on the sofa here. The black one. I don't know the names and breeds of dogs. I don't know if you do. But there's another dog. Oh, this one just like loving to lick my hand. Can you see? I don't know why. Obsessed with licking. I have to wash my hands after. It's kind of gross. Like really gross. <laughs> And that's another dog. Then there's another dog underneath, underneath the table. So I, I thought I'd show you the location where we're at. I don't know if you like dogs. I normally like cats, but this dog is like eating my hand. <laughs> anyway, I am slightly under the weather. I'm ill. I did make it back to Lima, which is in Peru. So today's um, live is about dogs that stop licking me. Um, this today's live is about why the divine masculine is the way he is and in my last live I was quite tough I was quite mean I called the divine masculine a few names I wasn't the nicest I know I wasn't and I felt bad for that actually because I got two comments one which someone deleted on YouTube which was like what well, one comment was like what's got into you and another comment was like how can you say all these things you're coming from your ego and I guess I was coming from my ego a little bit and <sighs> I was also emptying my cup, right? And I think we do have to give ourselves permission to be not always perfect and not always this like Buddha-like being that's just always, you know, loving and compassionate and kind. Sometimes we are annoyed and we are pissed off and we have suffered and we have gone through quite a lot. And I feel like the Divine Masculine has to hear that too. And we have to empty our cup. And of course, they are our Divine Mirror. And anything they do, we have within our consciousness. And we like to say, no, it's not me. And I don't do that. I'm not sleeping around. I'm not with different people. And I'm not egotistical. But deep down somewhere there is. And most of the comments that I got for that last live were quite positive, very positive. Some were quite cheering on. But um, I did know that there was a lot of uh, frustration within me as well at that moment, which was fine. I was letting it out. I didn't always want to be perfect. But I still go with the belief that, you know, if you if a soulmate shows up, then that's your responsibility and duty if you want to explore it. And it's OK and it can help you to heal. But it will also show you patterns that your divine masculine is mirroring to you. And it will show you places where you have insecurity still. So anyway, um, I had been smoking that tobacco, which is called Mapachu, because I know some of you have asked, uh, what is that tobacco that I was taking? And uh, but it's called Mapachu, and you smoke it only to the throat, and it helps you to basically forgive all the stuff that's happened. And as I was doing that, the first time was very, 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 um, it brought up a lot of stuff for me anyway. I was really upset, actually, and not in a good place. But after that, I actually started to heal and forgive, and it was really nice, and started to feel that love again, which we always do. Now, um... What came to me whilst I was doing the tobacco, because it speaks to you, the tobacco speaks to you, was where am I exhibiting this behavior? <clears throat> now, often, Divine Feminine, we will say Divine Masculine is doing all these things, but we're not doing it, okay? But we have to look at the core uh, to heal it, okay? So just because their action external looks different to what you're doing externally, it doesn't mean that the root doesn't be, isn't the same, you know? Does it come from rejection, abandonment, shame, blame, whatever? <clears throat> Sorry, I am ill. It got me thinking about my patterns of behavior where I was feeling lonely or acting from a place of feeling lonely, okay? It got me reflecting also that um, why do I feel like I need a soulmate or um, do I need someone, right? And it comes from a place of deep loneliness and a void, which you may have also. So in my uh, upbringing, my father was very distant emotionally, physically there, but not very, um, a, not very kind, not very loving, not very emotional, not very, um, you know, giving that attention that I desired. So I felt quite empty. And that loneliness stuck with me. 
And that's where this need for a partner, this need for this male figure kind of arose, which I have been trying to get through from my twin flame. And then when that's not been working, the frustration, and then finally it's like, let's get a soulmate, which you can if it comes from a place of wholeness, but it wasn't at that time from the last live, actually. So I realized that I was operating from a place of loneliness. So then I did San Pedro, which is a cactus um, plant medicine last Wednesday. Um, and that's also called Wachuma. And I was quite scared to do it because after ayahuasca, do you remember the, the person died on the retreat? Yes, they did die. So that was really terrible. So I thought what's going to happen because it was a bit of a roller coaster. But San Pedro is meant to be lighter, opens your heart space, and it's supposed to be more of a purer experience. And it was. And we delved deeper and healed the loneliness. This is what happened and it was amazing. And I understood that my loneliness was mirrored by my twin flame. So my twin flame and many of your twin flames, many of your divine masculines are deeply lonely people. And they haven't received the love and attention they wanted as a child, which most people don't usually. And therefore have all these mechanisms and practices in place to, to fill that void of loneliness that um, sadness, that, that frustration, that anger. So to, to the need for attention and validation and someone to fill that void from the ego. And some people will say, but why don't they get it from me? I'm their divine feminine. It doesn't work like that because you will always put them to account for their core wound to be able to heal that and they will do the same for you. So you will never be able to operate from that empty space. You will always be held account to heal it so that you operate from a place of divinity and wholeness and completion. They can do that with soulmates and karmics. They can play the game or fill the void, fill the loneliness through it. Now with the cactus plant, as it started working, you take a huge, huge glass and some people will like hold their noses and they've done it before. They thought it was really nasty, but for me, it tastes like alcohol. It was fine. Um, and it takes about an hour before it starts working. And the, the things that I've written some stuff down, which I'll read in a second, but in summary, what I learned was this, the plant, the, the cactus plant was speaking to me and it was saying, child, you are never alone. Now, all these things we know intellectually, but when you do plant medicine, you know it, sorry, the dog's here. When you do plant medicine, you know it from an experiential level. You actually feel it. You actually understand it to the core, to your soul. <clears throat> so basically it was saying the sun, the moon, the trees, the birds, the bees, everything, everything around us is always with us. We're never alone. We're a child of the universe, you know. Just because our father or our mother or other people did not give us what we wanted as children, it doesn't mean that we are alone. We have always been loved. We have always been um, cherished. We have always been, um, you know, um, looked after, always been in the gaze and the eyes of everything, the birds, the trees, the universe. We are all, all whole and one. And it just kept saying to me, you're not alone. You've never been alone. It's an illusion. Why do you think that you're alone? Um, because we are always, we have always been there for you. So that was really magical and wonderful. And then I started to realize that my divine masculine, which is very similar to most of your divine masculines, had also been operating from this illusion of I am alone, I'm lonely, and therefore, they had been trying to get that attention and validation from outside. So, you know, and then I started to get this deep sense of love, deep sense of peace for my twin flame, and started to feel that empathy and compassion for why they did what they did. And then later on, we have to go for like, we go for this like walk. So we went to the temple of the moon. And it was beautiful because everything, the clouds, you can see like shapes and, and spirits and, and, and the stones, everything is just talking to you and it's beautiful. Anyway, so we go into the temple and I didn't know that this was the case until afterwards. When I went into the temple, there was confetti all over the floor. It's like, you know, like a wedding had happened. And I got inside the temple by myself one at a time and I started like speaking and touching the stones and, and, and the temple and understanding what's around me. And... I felt like I was getting married, if I'm honest with you. And it felt like a matrimony and I was getting blessed. And the temple of the moon was just saying to me, you know, um, you, you know, when you get uh, married and sometimes they give you advice afterwards, it was like, stop bickering with your twin flame and stop acting silly because you love each other and you should be forgiving and just be kind and your future's amazing. And, da, 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 da. and it kept saying all these, that like, I was there for about 15 minutes and it gave me loads of like advice about relationships. 
And then when I came out, I asked the shaman, I was like, I, I, got, I just got married in there. Like, what's going on? And he's like, yeah, this is the, the temple of like holy marriage between divine masculine and divine feminine. I was like, no kidding, really? And he's like, yeah. He said, look outside. So we went outside and there was like these two big thrones, divine masculine, divine feminine. And he said, that's where people would sit before they got married and they had their ceremony. I was like, wow. So I actually was connected to it, right? So I sat in the divine feminine, divine masculine, and I just absorbed the energy. And I realized from that moment on, I'm never alone. Obviously, God, your twin flame is always there with you, but the whole of nature is constantly with you. And we don't need to operate from wounded placings no more. And therefore, we don't need to act from desperation or need even for a soulmate if we feel the need. But if it happens, it happens and you go for it. But the reason why the divine masculine acts and behaves the way they do is because of your joint core wounding. Loneliness is a big one. There's also other things like abandonment. But abandonment, again, you abandoned, you feel lonely, right? You feel worthless, you feel lonely. You feel insecure, you feel lonely. You just want to feel someone there holding you and being there for you. That's what it is. <clears throat> and often, you know, divine feminine will say, oh, I don't do that. I'm not like that. It's not the way your behavior is, because that's the external response. It's the core wound which makes you act out that way. And you may act in different ways. Divine masculine is very physical, very out there. So, yeah. So I'm going to read some of my notes and then maybe take some questions. But I'm going to end soon because I have to catch a flight in a few hours to go to Chile, San Diego. Okay. So, yes. I grew up in a very violent household. I was gay. I felt very lonely and isolated as a kid. But the medicine said no more. Love is the key. Your twin flame felt the same way. Hence, his need for attention on social media. It's for acceptance, to get a tribe, but at what cost? The cost was his nudity, that's what my twin did. So um, looking outside for attention and love from men, because um, you want them near you, near you, feel you, see you, be there for you. You want to be seen, heard, acknowledged, because maybe you didn't feel like that as a child. To say, look what happened to me, I need attention. But with your twin flame, you are two peas in a pod, united. You're never alone. You felt you were alone on this journey, but you never were. The entire universe is with you. Holding on to the illusion or the resentment does not help you. You don't have to pretend you are okay. We are what we are, and you must accept it. So I write loads of notes, and I'm going to carry on, because the other people in my group, they were vomiting, they had stomach aches, they couldn't eat. And they weren't making notes, whereas I was very hyper alert and aware because I wanted to share these things with you. So basically, we have, all have mechanisms put in place, including divine masculine, to cope with the illusion, the illusion that we're alone. Loneliness is a disease, but it's, it's not the truth. We must accept ourselves and love ourselves. Our twin shows us this differently, but they have the same core beliefs, the same wounding. It's an illusion to the truth. I've had the knees pain and back pain as well. And some of you might have had the left back pain. I think some while ago it was happening. It's to do with the divine masculine side. Knees is to do with ego. But there's also a need to take care of your body and um, stretch and be kind to it. Be gentle, caring, and kind on yourself and your twin flame. <coughs> you don't always have to be strong or powerful. Actually, your twin flame, divine masculine, loves it when the divine feminine is in a very sweet, gentle space. Um, face your loneliness. There is no loneliness. We are all connected as one. The mountains, the birds, the trees, the wind. We are always connected, never alone. And we don't need to have this false external props or people to pretend to keep us going because we are already whole and complete. We are one. We are already all that is. We are humble and we know this. We are children, we are innocent, we are frivolous, we are joyful, we are pure, whole, one, and complete. Feel that deep inner loneliness. Accept and acknowledge love. The twin was also very lonely. No more. We are one. So, your twin created a social facade, but it was only acknowledged when they performed. That's how they got attention when they were performing like an animal, okay? 
So that's how they were as a child, and that's how they were as an adult. They had to create a persona to be able to get the love or the attention. We no longer need to perform. We are not animals in a zoo or a circus. We are the light, shine bright. We are not puppets performing. We are God particles. So I was writing all this whilst I was high on the plant medicine, okay? Okay, we are divine particles of God, intertwined angelic beings. I can't wait to be intertwined in the arms of love. Accept the truth of that which you are. A soul, beautiful, divine. Not puppets on a string. All my madness was due to my perceived loneliness. And all of your twin flame's madness is due to their perceived loneliness. Who will love me comes from loneliness. There's no need to look outside anymore. You're not perpetuating your inner child to a darkened room and forcing them. You're turning on the light and liberating them and yourself and everyone else. Imagine the embrace, the warm embrace of a mother. Give that to yourself. Get yourself out of the little prisons you have put yourself in in the first place. You are accepted by the sun, the stars, the moon, the wind, the trees. You are seen, you are heard, you are acknowledged, you are held, and you are loved. What more could you ask for? You are cradled and loved and, and embraced and accepted and wanted and needed and trusted. What you say or think about your twin you have that same characteristics within you. You may kick and scream and say, no, it's not me, me. Deep down it is. It's not the way it performs externally. It's the way it is internally. You may do it in a different way, emotionally or other ways, because we are all crazy, okay? And I am too. But we have to acknowledge and integrate and accept the craziness to alchemize it to the divine. Imagine the sweet lullaby of your mother, laying in her laps, in her embrace. That's where you want to be. No more distractions, no more illusions. Soak up all the love you wanted now. So as I was on the plant medicine, we were outside <coughs> laying down and the sun was shining. And the medicine kept, kept saying, soak up all the love we're giving to you from the sun, the wind, the mountains, the birds, the trees. Soak it up. Take it in. Absorb it. All the stuff that you wanted as a kid, that loneliness you felt. Take it from us, the universe. Fill yourself up. Your father and mother didn't know how to do this. And if they did, they would have done it. They wanted you. They wanted to be happy and loved as well. They didn't know. Soak it up like a plant. Soak up the sun. Absorb it like a sponge. You get love by being loved. So, you know, that's something I could recommend to you is, um, well, if you want to do the medicine, it's beautiful. San Pedro, this uh, retreat I would recommend. So if you want, I, I could give you details. Um, you just message me. But you could go outside and lay on the grass and just absorb the sun or lay in your room and allow the sun rays to, to, to caress you and fill yourself up knowing that the sun loves you and the, the universe loves you. You do, not, you do not need to sell yourself short. Be yourself. You don't need to sell yourself to a job to get success, money, or love. Or to, to another person to cut yourself short. <clears throat> Be yourself, which is love. Do from a place of expression, of self-love. Imagine yourself as the flower in bloom. It just is, in blossom, in all its glory, in all its perfume. It doesn't have to be violent or aggressive or powerful all the time. You can be gentle with yourself, be pure and kind. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I am ill. You grew up in fear and violence, perhaps, or in darkness. No surprises. But you don't need to be that way. You can be gentle and kind and peaceful. Nearly finished. You don't have to be harsh. Your twin flame doesn't like that divine feminine. The divine masculine prefers you to be peaceful, tranquil, and a safe space, gentle and balanced and healed. That's where they feel good too. 
What will punishing yourself and others achieve? Nothing. Visualize the harmony, love, and peace, and the projects you want to do. So at this point, I started seeing all the things like with me and my twin. So he does a lot of photos and he photographs of himself, and I do a lot of spiritual and travel stuff on social media. But I want to combine it, and I was thinking about architectural digest, and I like love to cook, so I was doing like like uh, doing some cooking stuff and, and just like couple stuff like. You know, we don't have to be specifically twin flame, but like us as a couple living our life and doing social media and like bringing that joy and light. I was thinking about the children, the future and the love and about being in harmonious love, harmonious paths forged forwards. So if you just join later, it might be interesting to see from the start why I gave this um, rendition of what I learned on the plant medicine. But basically, when you truly understand it, the divine masculine is lonely, just like you, and they act in ways, unlike you, they act in different ways. But deep down, there is a sense of innocence and peace and love. And uh, it's okay. It's okay. And you can heal that. And when you heal it, they will heal too. And you are always divinely protected and guided and wanted and needed by everything, nature, the universe. You are a child of God. Let's see if there's any questions. Otherwise, I'm going to have to hop off, take some medicine. The DMs are wild with their social media, yes. It's very, um, what you call it, um, they're very external and physical. Are you still in South America? Yes, I mentioned I'm in Lima, uh, Lima Peru. <laughs> it's really nice. Um, I had a soulmate come in and I said no. Yeah, and you can. They, they, you will learn from it. As a twin flame, you will always be redirected to your twin flame. People learn from it. Um, hello from Barcelona. I did, one of my friends did, he's just, um, his name's Yaya. He did a social media post about where we're at right now. And he said a lot of divine feminines are sick because we're healing the divine masculine throat chakra. I don't know if anyone else is sick. My problem is that I'm highly intuitive and it would have to be a highly spiritual soulmate that can deal with my gifts. Yeah. I find my twin flame. I know we are in union. However, sometimes... <clears throat> I get anxious for this to happen quickly, then remember everything is divine as it is. It happens as it's meant to. If it's happening quick, it's okay. Just breathe. I sense my twin flame's loneliness. Yeah, there you go. You can read their energies. And if they are lonely, there's an aspect of you that's lonely, which you can heal with love. I feel his pain with the male ego that doesn't allow them to come forward. So we're going to have to stop like pointing fingers as well. We'll have somewhere within us where we have a perception that there is an ego for the male and that's why we're creating it and it's being mirrored. I know my DM and I are one and always connected. I miss him. Any suggestions to overcome? I feel unity is on the horizon. So if you're missing, then you're not in union, right? In, in a union because you're seeing it as separate still. So you'll get to a point where you'll feel them all the time. So yes, physically they're not there. Accept it. But feel them within you and just always know that you are two peas in a pod. I'll help you. Okay. Um, for some reasons, I've slowed down posting on Instagram. He blocked me. I have not blocked him. I feel like I have my light to shine and my voice to speak, but I can't at the moment. So take your time. If you can't, that's fine. Thank you for the universe for loving me. Yes. Funny somehow after all this fight. How do I know we will come together? You just know in your heart. And if you're doubting it, then you're manifesting doubt. If you're thinking it's not going to happen, you're manifesting the same. It's not going to happen then, right? Sometimes we are keeping the strength because we had difficult past relationships. So it feels like we have to be strong to overcome challenges. So we're still acting from a place of wounding and trauma. We have to let that go. And we have to realize that that was the past and we can be gentle and kind and because we are safe and protected. Obviously, you have your boundaries, but you are taken care of, so it doesn't matter. I am also sick. Well, there you go. I've been sick for three weeks. There you go. People have been sick. Hi, Manny. Hi. Sick for three weeks. A lot of people feeling, sending healing energies to you, my friend. So we're going to end ooh, with the dog, the beautiful dog. I don't know if you know, on TikTok, there's a dog like this. There's a woman that makes dog food and she cooks it. It's amazing. Anyway, so... Um, Heal your loneliness by knowing that you're divinely protected, loved, and wanted. 
and soak up the sun and fill yourself up with love and everything will be fine. Take care. Bye.